What features would you consider important in a smart home? How can farmers use technology to manage their cattle? Or how can you take an everyday object like a bicycle helmet and add a bit of technology to improve rider safety? How are carnival rides automated? Welcome to the STEM T4L Microcontroller Kit, a collection of technologies for students to develop new smart solutions and automated systems to scenarios that are important to them. In this video, we'll explore each component so that you can begin to plan the types of inputs and outputs students will have access to. The kit is made up of 18 sets, so students can design, build and code in pairs. Using the kit to ideate digital solutions, prototype and share their projects is best done when combined with construction materials like cardboard or balsa wood, even Lego or a 3D printer. So consider how you're going to source some of those materials. There's a total of 20 inputs and outputs in each set, lots of scope for creativity on how sensors collect data from the real world and how that data is gonna be used. You'll use the website makecode.microbit.org on a laptop or a PC to code how each of these inputs and outputs collect and share data. The number of inputs and outputs in a project is a direct reflection of how complex the project becomes. Stage four and five students should be aiming for about four or five inputs and outputs in total. A project with six is getting quite complex. The core components of the kit are the Microbit version 2, the shield, which acts as an expansion device, the battery packs, extension cords so that the sensors can be built into the physical structure of the project, and the crocodile clips to create no-mess circuitry. Some of these components come in individual bags with twist wires to organise the cables. Please keep those so when you pack up the kit, then the next school finds it organized and tidy. Power to the micro bits is mostly via the USB cable from your laptop or PC. But if the project requires untethered operation away from the laptop because of where the new smart invention lives, then use the three volt battery pack. On the battery pack connector, there is a ridge that needs to be facing down as it connects due to the delicate pins inside the microbit connection. So please take care. In some situations where the motor is running often, you might need to use the six volt battery pack. For more information on how to manage extra power, see the article that's linked in the description of this video. The microbit has quite a few built-in sensors. The 25 LED matrix on the microbit is both an input and an output, acting as a light sensor. There is a simple speaker, two buttons for user input, a microphone to detect audio, a touchpad for one tap input, a radio receiver so that two microbits can share data. There is a compass providing directional data as the microbit changes its orientation. The microbit also has a built-in temperature sensor providing ambient room temperature as usable data. The last built-in sensor students can take advantage of is the accelerometer that measures the physical movement and the orientation of the microbit. When you plug the microbit into the shield with the LED matrix facing out, you'll be able to connect these external inputs and outputs. A rotary angle input to create a series of numbers as you dial it up or dial it down, a separate light sensor input, an ultrasonic ranger input measuring distance of approaching objects, a gesture sensor that can be triggered by the wave of a hand, temperature and humidity input measuring the ambient conditions, useful for tracking changes over time perhaps or conditions at a certain location, there is a single red LED output. Now these LEDs are cheap and they're pretty simple to buy if the school wants to swap out the red color for a different color. There is a water resistant LED strip. Each individual light in the strip can be managed in the coding environment. A four digit display and two servos or motors. 
One is a limited range servo that only turns 360 degrees one way and then 360 degrees back. The other is a continuous servo, like a normal motor. The STEM T4L Learning Library page about the microcontroller kit has a complete list of these parts in printable PDF so students can begin the brainstorm and look at all the possibilities. If any parts are missing when your kit arrives, please log a support ticket on the Learning Library. Visit the link t4l.link forward slash STEM. We can't wait to see what kind of solutions your students have engineered. Please join us on the STEM T4L Facebook group or the Yammer community where teachers are sharing their ideas and questions.